Okay, next up, we're going to check out how to use the whammy bar in conjunction with this. Uh, the whammy bar is quite a vast subject. It could be a course on its own. Uh, maybe it will be. But for now, we're just going to uh, explore what I can do with the whammy bar in conjunction with all the techniques that we're talking about now. Since your fingers are going to be pretty busy, um, you know, your thumb, or if you're holding the pick and the hybrid picked fingers, uh, with this, I have the whammy bar cupped right there in my fourth finger. Um, and as I'm playing, I usually just grab it like that. I'll use my fingers and then take the fingers like that off, and then I have them right there. So what happens is, here, I'll go back to our F9 chord we've been working with. I'm using a motion that looks more than it actually is. I'm relaxing my finger here, and I'm see how I'm toggling the bar? You can see me going away from the bar and coming back and grabbing it. It's kind of like that. I'm not actually gripping it really hard and doing all the motion that you're seeing. So I'm more massaging the bar here. And I'm going for this watery vibrato feel. In order to do that, though, you do have to have a tremolo system that allows your um, bridge to be floating, which means that you can pull up as well as down. So you're going to have to have a route um, underneath the bridge. So when you pull the bridge up, it doesn't hit the wood. Uh, more often than not, guitars are set up not to float. So you're either going to have to have uh, your repair technician raise your bar a little bit if you don't have the route, or you can get a route, and then you'll be able to, uh, to be able to pull the bar back and forth. Remember, if you do that, though, when you break a string, um, whether you have a locking nut or not, you're done. You've got to get that string back on there. If you're floating, that's it, because uh, the string tension between all six strings to stay in tune becomes more important. So anyway, back to the bar here. <laughs> I'm using it to get these water chords, and I'm also sometimes using it to get those quarter step inflections. I'm just getting small pitch vibrato here. So if I put it together, you say, let's do something here with a. Uh it's throwing in this, uh, this almost like rewind tape feel, whereas you're playing a good old cassette and you hit the rewind button while the play button's on and uh, you start to hear that pitch modulation that happens there. You know, these, these jerks in pitch. And that's what I'm going for here to throw in this element of surprise. You never see this one coming. Sometimes I'll go into chords. I will pre-depress uh, the bar and slowly rise the chord or do it quickly. Gives it a different attack. Instead of just strummed like that, come up with a quick attack. If you haven't noticed, I'm trying to do everything but actually strike strings with a pick. Because I'm just trying to give myself more options than just doing that. And it's, this goes for single notes too. Let's go into uh, uh, dropping a punch, doing a pop, so I get a punch, which is a little hard with the bar in your hand. It takes a little practice. And I raise the pitch. This all comes together when you start putting all the licks and the riffs uh, into one continuous flow of all these techniques, which we're about to do. But before we do that, let's go into a vamp and check out uh, what the bar sounds like uh, mixed in with some of the other techniques. So here we go. <laughs> 